What did a teacher say or do to you that you've never forgotten? Story one. My freshman science teacher noticed I was starting to have a panic attack, wrote me a note to go to my counselor, and then I left to do so. He was my favorite teacher. I failed almost everything but had the best grade in his class. I will never forget that man. The teacher can make all the difference in a student's work edit. Also adding on to this, one time in this class, I went to break down in the bathroom, and when I left the bathroom, one of my classmates was standing there waiting for me. He kissed me, and I started to bad person out, but anyways, after that incident, my teacher never allowed him to leave the classroom when I left. Same teacher, same class. Story two. I was homeschooled until the 10th grade. I started public school, and the first week we were assigned a paper in English class. I'd never written anything before. I did my best and turned in what I'm sure was basically word salad. The teacher asked me to speak with him after class and asked about my background, but was extremely understanding. Without a hint of judgment, he took time out of his own schedule to get me up to speed and teach me the basics of grammar, structure, etc. It was an incredibly selfless act. I'm an attorney now, and I'm not sure I'd have even made it out of high school without him. Story 3 I became quite close with one of my band teachers in high school and viewed him as a father figure in many ways. My parents were freshly divorced, and I was floundering without a male role model at all. My father never made attempts to see me. The teacher was noticing some changes in me and figured out the story. All it took was a sincere eyeball-to-eyeball -eyeball statement of, I believe in you. You are better than you realize. And the sun shone brighter and the clouds parted a bit. When he retired, I made sure to go to his final school concert and we caught up. It was amazing, but then I saw his wife of several decades. I walked over and introduced myself and thanked her for sacrificing their time together for all those years so he could be someone that his students needed in their lives. We both started crying and hugged. Thank you, Mr. and Mrs. Rizzo. You are better than you will ever realize. Story 4 I was in J.R. High taking Algebra 2 with high schoolers. I was about 12 and there was a guy in the class, a senior, about 17. I sat in the front of the class. Since this was the first class of the day, and it was the 90s in rural America, we stood up to say the Pledge of Allegiance every morning. Halfway during the pledge every day, this 17-year-old would put his foot on my butt and push me towards the front of the room, everyone laughing. My teacher would tell him to stop, but didn't do much more because she knew that would make it worse. So one morning I got there earlier than everyone else. This guy was always late, so when he got into class, he had to take the seat at the front of the row. When we stood to do the pledge, I placed my foot on his butt and pushed as hard as he could. The class was silent. The teacher knew somehow what I had planned. As soon as he turned around to do something, the teacher jumped in, told him, You do that every day to him. You deserve that. He never bothered me again. Story 5. I love to sew. I've been sewing since I was a kid. In high school, I took a sewing class as an extra and was miles ahead of the other students. I made a gray wool floor-length cloak with a red lining while everyone else was making pajama pants. My teacher graded me according to my skill and not compared to the other students. Then she found me a year later and showed me a pic in a catalog of a Renaissance-style dress she thought I'd like. It was a wedding dress, but I loved it anyway. My mom took me fabric shopping, and the next semester I took that class again and made the dress. My teacher stayed in with me during lunches, after school, during study periods, and guided me through making that dress. She even helped tackle the challenge of gathering many layers of heavy silk and jacquard and linings, tapping into every trick she knew to get it to work. Zigzag stitch over dental floss finally did it. Then she graded me according to my skill set. I got a 94. Dinged for some less than perfect hand stitching on the hem, I then put it on and ran over to my favorite science teacher's classroom to show her. I took biology, anatomy, and physiology, AP bio, and AP anatomy and physiology from her huge science nerd here, and she stopped her class so I could get up on a desk and show off my dress. Eight years later, I wore that dress to get married. They were both at my wedding as well as my 7th and 8th grade English teacher, and singled out as honored guests, along with the moms and grandmas as people who were highly influential to me. I will never forget their support and encouragement and dedication to their craft that has inspired me for all my life. I'm 43 now. I was an X-ray tech for 20 years, and I still sew regularly. I also love good spelling and grammar LOL. Story 6. I grew up in an extremely abusive home. Sadly didn't realize how bad it was till after I left at 17. 
but my high school counselor let me talk to her about what was happening to me at home. She advised me to let her call someone to help me, but I had already tried to get the law involved once and my mother actually defended my father and told the police I was being overdramatic. She said I was only able to have three meetings with her before she had to call my parents and tell them what I had told her according to the high school rules. So, on my last time seeing her, I bawled my eyes out and she gave me a hug and said, you are way stronger and smarter than your parents will ever realize. And I hope you show them one day just what you've got. Her voice and hug live in my head a decade later, and I'm happy to say that it definitely helped me through college. With multiple degrees and certifications later, I'm in a much better place with my wonderful little family. And best part, the two people who regrettably brought me into the world apparently cry wolf every day recently about how much they miss seeing me. I'm sure it has nothing to do with them on the verge of loosing their house and looking to stay somewhere while they figure out finances. They're also apparently filing bankruptcy. They better hope the princess treatment they gave my younger sister pays off. Story 7. In high school, I was the class clown always made people laugh and was there for them. I put up a front, the happy and cheeriest one, but I was struggling so bad with mental health issues, hated life and myself. Borderline to the sky. Anyway, one day when I was telling a joke and laughing with everyone, this one teacher took me aside and said, You're such a joy to everyone, but I can see the pain in your eyes. Your place in this world matters and would be so much poorer without you. Don't give up. Well, God, oh no, I thought I was so good at hiding it from everyone. And it kind of broke me that someone could tell. But yeah, a moment I'll never forget. Story 8. Okay, my school had this thing with the local university where we would get to visit. One year it was just a day visit. But the next was a trip staying over. This thing was also linked to a bursary. I was on the list to go, and when on the first year there was this teacher that wanted to inspire the problem kids, put them on the right path or whatever. Anyway, for the second year she took my name off so she could put the kids she wanted to inspire on the list instead. The trip meant missing like a day or two of school. So of course these kids said yes, despite having no intention of ever going to university, whether or not they actually could if they actually tried, and only went because they could miss school. When I spoke up, this teacher basically said that I had no chance of going to university, so I got to spend the day in empty classrooms with teachers asking why I wasn't on the trip. Spoiler alert, I went to university. Story 9. This isn't very positive, but when I was in high school, I got very into painting and was actually very good. I liked to paint portraits and could paint very realistically. I had a good eye for color and blending. I don't have a lot of talents, and didn't back then either, besides the sports I played. I was very depressed and painting helped. I never really finished projects, though. But when my English teacher in 11th grade had us do a book report project and wanted us to recreate the cover, I painted the cover of the book I chose. I spent so much time and effort and finished it beautifully. He loved it and asked to hold on to it for a year for next year's students as an example of what he wanted. He was raving about how my painting looked just like the cover. I told him I really wanted it back at the end of my senior year because it was my first finished painting and I was proud of it. Side note, I don't remember the exact reasoning that English class turned into basically art class for this project. I'm sure I'm forgetting some details about why he wanted us to do this. So anyway, senior year I was homeless BC, my parents kicked me out so I couldn't bring my paint stuff. I hadn't painted in a while and wanted to get back into it and wanted my painting back for inspiration at the end of the year when I found steady living. I had literally just found out I wasn't going to graduate with my class BC. I missed so much school that year for being homeless. My teachers let me off classes for the day BC. I was crushed, and they knew my situation, and I was given permission to muck about painting in the art room. So I asked him for my painting since it was the end of the year, and he said, Oh, I threw it away. I'll never forget the indifference and the tone he set it in. I don't completely blame him. He probably genuinely forgot and maybe scrapped the project idea for that year's class. But that broke me more than anything else that had happened, and I just sat and cried all day. I haven't painted since either. Not necessarily completely because of that, but it made me too sad to paint for a while, and I never got back into it. So anyway, that is the one thing I remember from a teacher 14 years later. Story 10. Junior year of college, I was taking an abnormal psychology class during fall semester. We had an exam scheduled for September 12th of that year. The day before was September 11, 2001, and our classes were not canceled. We get to class, everyone obviously devastated from the attacks the day before. Our professor got in front of the class and told us this. No matter what tragedies you witness or go through, life will not stop to accommodate your feelings or emotions. We proceeded to take our scheduled exam. 
but we had to remain in class until everyone finished. Once the last exam was turned in, she told us that she hoped we would take that lesson to heart, then threw the exams in the trash. Best lesson I've ever been taught. Story 11. Miss Fowler, my 11th grade math teacher, told us early on in the school year, if you don't understand something the first time I go over it, it's because you weren't paying attention, and I will not waste my time repeating myself. As someone who struggles with math, I learned the hard way that she meant it. I tried and tried and tried, but I just couldn't get it and she was never any help. Ended up giving up. Just putting random answers to assignments and tests. Was given the option to pay $150 and go to summer school where I'd just do assignments until I got a passing grade, likely have the same teacher as well. Or, flunk out, repeat the class as a senior and graduate on a lesser plan. I took option B and felt like a failure. On the flip side. Senior year, I got a new math teacher, Mr. Kerr. My grade never went under a 90 in his class. I understood things I never did the year prior. Even got decent at trigonometry. He built a confidence in me I never knew I could have. Story 12. I was bullied throughout elementary school badly. I also had a DD, but it wasn't a thing back then. I was always daydreaming and not paying attention in class. The teachers allowed this bullying and sometimes seemed to encourage it. One kid actually hit me in the stomach with a plastic bat when I was walking home one day. When one of the kids would pick up finished papers from everyone, they would make a little spray thing with their hand and pretend to spray my paper before they touched it. One girl had an older sister who had a car, and she would drive by me while the girl and her best friend would hang out the window and yell things at me, calling me a worker, bad person, worker, etc., I didn't even know what a worker a worker was. One day in class, it was getting pretty bad, and the teacher pulled me out in the hall. She invited my other teachers to join her. The three of them stood around me and told me that I was a failure, that I didn't apply myself. They said the kids made fun of me because of the way I acted. I still don't even know what they meant by that. I was quiet then, and that I deserved it. I don't remember all of the things they said to me. I was a little girl surrounded by adults saying horrible things about me. I was terrified and crying, and I still had to go back to class. This affected me so bad that I never trusted adults after that. I was scared of my teachers. I still have flashbacks of that one day, and I'm 45 years old. So here's a big fudge you to all those teachers from back then who helped make my elementary school days hell. Edit. A word. Story 13. The nurse at my grade school would go to Goodwill on her days off and pick up clothing for kids who had hard home lives, and they would come in on Mondays, and she would let them shower and get ready in the nurse's office and give them clean clothes to wear and have them brush their teeth and do their hair for them. Every morning, she had a rotation of kids she did this with, and they all showered every other day, and she washed clothing every night for them, so they'd have clean clothes for school and not be picked on. She had been doing it for years, and no one really noticed, and I mentioned it to my mom in passing, and my mom got a bunch of other moms together, and it started a whole program at our school, and the nurse had a ton more help and resources. We lived in a rural farming community, and back then there were a lot of immigrant workers. So it ended up helping a lot of kids, and it was awesome to see our community come together over it. Nurse Rachel and her silently helping these kids for so many years was a big example to me of serving your fellow man, and taught me a lot about not knowing other people's circumstances, so I tend to not judge people by those things now. Story 14. I grew up in an abusive household, and when I was in elementary school, my mom left and took us to a domestic violence shelter a few times. When I was in the third grade, we had left very suddenly after my dad started hurting my mom and we grabbed what we could. Somehow I just missed my homework sheet. I had never missed and never missed again my homework. I was a perfectionist and my mom told me the only way I was going to make it out of the abuse and poverty was if I pulled myself out. I worked so hard. I still remember the pit I felt in my stomach when I realized I had left my homework at home. I tried to pull the teacher aside to tell her what happened because I didn't want anybody to know that my dad was beating us up. She refused to even listen to me, said there was no excuse, and gave me silent lunch. Now this was a big deal in elementary school, because all of the other kids just sat and looked at the silent lunch table. So I sat at the silent lunch table and cried the whole time because I thought it was my fault. My life was turned upside down, and a teacher who is supposed to at least have sympathy couldn't be bothered by my excuse. I never told my mom, and I never got in trouble ever again. I'm 28 now, and I'm a lawyer, and I'm super successful on paper and all of that, but I have never, ever forgotten that moment. Story 15. 
There was an academic Olympics my junior year of high school, and my physics teacher made a bet with my buddy and me. If we were to place first, second, or third, we would receive an A for the year. I placed second. He gave me an A that quarter, but a B the second quarter. I asked why I got a B, and he told me that I was smarter than the effort, and the only reason he made the bet was because he knew I'd still do the work. I had some rough times in college, but every time I questioned if I could really do something, I'd recall his words. Getting that A instead of the B I deserved changed my life in the best way. R.I.P. Mr. Gamble. Story 16. My creative writing teacher from high school invited me to play Scrabble with her on the last day of school. We played for like two hours, and before I left, she gifted me a first edition copy of The Bell Jar. Absolutely changed my life. Spending time with her and being acknowledged in that way at that age, I just realized that anything was possible for me that I didn't need to limit myself. She lost her tenure that same year, but later became a travel journalist. I went on to get my MFA in creative fiction. We still keep in touch, and I keep my original copy of The Bell Jar in a glass case on my fireplace. Story 17. Fifth grade teacher, Mrs. W. I doodled and drew a lot as a kid. Most teachers didn't mind as long as the work was finished, but Mrs. who loved my drawings. I'd recently gotten a How to Draw Dragons book and kept drawing a specific one over and over to improve. She asked me one day to draw her one on a blank sheet of paper, and after I was finished, asked me to sign it because you're going to be a famous artist one day and I want to have a signed copy of one of your original pictures. It was such a small thing, but it made me feel really good. She ended up passing away relatively suddenly from cancer when I was a sophomore in college, going to school for 3D art. She was on my mind during portfolio review at the end of the term. I wished I could have shown her some of the art I'd created. She crosses my mind a couple times a year ever since, and I always get teary-eyed thinking about her. R.I.P. Mrs. W. Story 18. Here is a positive one. I had an English teacher that learned I was actually pretty passionate about poetry. He gave me a copy of one of Mary Oliver's books, and she has been one of my favorite poets since. Near the end of the year, we had a big project due, and that project was originally slated to be poetry-related. A bunch of the other kids in class were annoyed, complained about it, so he changed the project to a movie review instead. He knew I was probably the only person disappointed by this change, and he let me know I could continue with the original project. He did little things like that to connect with his students and keep them engaged. I know that is a lot of work for teachers to pull off and not expected, but I really appreciated the effort and care. Story 19. In high school chemistry, the three, a small class of only the 15 that continued on from earlier chem classes, was conducted as a sort of self-study for the final with the teacher, acting as an expert on standby for questions while we worked through the material for the final at our own pace and method. I'm a kid from working-class background. Neither parents went past high school, also taking classes in welding at the Resource Center. Good student but not gifted, average for someone who cares enough to study. Teacher gets everyone's attention and says he's got some info on how to apply for CLEP credit for the course. We all stand up to move to the front to see his computer. Teacher waves at me and another couple of kids and says, Don't worry about this, you guys. This is just for people who are going to college. You guys can keep studying for the final. I was crushed because I realized that not only didn't the teacher think I was a kid who was going to college, he didn't think I was asterisk the kind of kid asterisk who goes to college. I just sat back down. Confidence sucked after that. Well, fudge him. I did go to college and switched out of my welding program and got a bachelor's and a master's and a doctorate and two residency certificates. Now I'm a staff surgeon and have been adjunct faculty teaching surgery to interns at a generalist residency. And just to head people off at the pass, no, this isn't the kind of thing that motivates people or makes people determined to prove doubters wrong. It's not adversity that makes one stronger. It was just a teacher dismissing a student's potential, story 20. Not an awesome memory, but my fourth grade teacher would constantly mark right answers wrong on tests, and I ended up with lower grades. Lots of chaos at home, because I was on principal's honors roll every year till now, meaning straight A's, and suddenly I was getting C's. This led to that, came out she was purposely marking right answers wrong. In a meeting with her, my mom, and the principal, she confidently said she's teaching me that in the real world, I'm going to have to work much harder than everyone else to be equal to them. I was the only black kid in my school. On a happier note, still and always, my fav teacher ever was my nursery school teacher. I remember her name, what she looked like, her voice. She didn't say or do anything specific that is particularly memorable, 
She was just always so kind and attentive, and I just felt so good around her always. I didn't have a great home life, so that she was so nice to me really meant a lot and still does. Story 21. Refused to let me go to the bathroom in sixth grade. Well, that problem solved itself, except now they had a puddle to clean up. The lunch lady was real nice and got me a spare set of pants from the lost and found. And I could use the gym shower, so no harm, no foul. But that rotten, illegitimate child should have known I have a weak bladder and malfunctioning bladder valves. Did he think I wore overnight diapers to the sixth grade school trip for fun? Cool point. You were there. You should have known that no, I can't keep it in for half an hour. Now, to be fair, I had forgotten to use the bathroom during recess, but I didn't need to go then. Luckily, it was one of hose schools where everyone knew everyone, and everyone knew about me and my problems. So no one gave me cow about it, to my face at least, don't know if they talked behind my back. So in short, fudge that guy. Story 22. I was a really smart but troubled kid, and came from a family of people with undiagnosed ADHD, so my parents never thought to get me assessed. I also seemed really smart, so to them nothing seemed wrong but I could never concentrate long enough to complete a longer assignment, so I would ace short assignments and fail long ones, and whether I passed the course depended on what type of assignments were used. I think teachers just thought I was being lazy. I had a teacher in grade 11 who loved my writing, and when the first long assignment came and I didn't hand it in instead of chastising or failing me on it, she told me she was worried about me and asked me if something was wrong. I started crying and told her I just couldn't do it and it was too much for me to handle. She ended up calling in my mom and a guidance counselor, and they helped me get referred for assessment and treatment for ADHD and anxiety, depression, and to get the help and accommodations I needed at school. My mom still talks about her. Without her, I would have just been a smart kid that never amounted to anything and failed high school for being lazy. Instead, my grades improved immensely, and the guidance counselor helped me apply for financial aid scholarships because my family was poor and I ended up getting a fully paid scholarship to university, all because this one teacher noticed I was struggling and believed me and believed in me when no one else did. Very first generation on either side of my family to get a degree. Ah. Story 23. I'm conventionally handsome, and when I was in high school, my AP physics teacher took an inappropriate interest in me. It started out as just her constantly calling on me, or asking me to help her set up labs that escalated to commenting in front of the whole class that I must be beating away girls with a stick and how she can't believe I don't have a girlfriend. Sometimes she would say things along the lines of how I was the exact kind of guy she would have dated when she was in high school. All of that was a little weird but harmless. Obviously, my classmates picked up on it, and rumors circulated that we were hooking up, but it didn't really bother me. Things started escalating midway through the year. My physics lab alternated with gym, then I had lunch. On days when I had a double period of physics, she would always ask me to stay and eat with her. When I resisted, she would guilt me into it by telling me how she has to eat alone in her office. I'd feel bad and give in. After a while, she started massaging my shoulders or making other physical contact. She started becoming more and more flirty with me. Flirty isn't really the right word. She would ask me how far I've gone with a girl or craziest thing I've ever done. She always wanted to know if I was dating or hooking up with anyone. Eventually, I did start dating a girl, and when she found out it was just a constant stream of she's a worker, you can do so much better, etc. At this point, I was really, really uncomfortable. This was in 01, and things were much different in high schools. I really didn't know who to go to, so I went to a young, very liberal teacher who I thought would take an older, reasonably attractive female teacher sexually harassing a male student seriously, but he didn't at all. He didn't understand what I was complaining about. I was living every high school guy's fantasy, except I wasn't. I was really crushed that he didn't take me seriously. The time that followed was one of the lowest points in my life. I didn't know where to turn. It definitely wasn't a thing I was comfortable telling my parents, even though they were great parents, and I didn't want to embarrass myself further with teachers. Finally, I talked to my football coach. At that point in the year, it was baseball season, but he commented that I looked like cow and asked what was up. Again, this was zero one, one and he was at the school since like the 80s. He was your stereotypical suck-it-up buttercup, no pain, no gain type of 80s football coach. He was the absolute last person I wanted to tell, but I was at my breaking point and confessed everything. I was in tears and mortified by the time I finished talking. I was waiting for here a booming laugh with him calling me boy. Instead, he reassured me that I hadn't done anything wrong and checked in to make sure I was physically and emotionally okay. 
After that, he got the principal involved and made it unequivocally clear that I was not living every high school guy's fantasy and the school will take this seriously. He then asked if I needed him to talk to my parents about what had happened, explaining that a lot of people in my shoes might not be comfortable talking to my parents about something like this, and he was 100% correct. A lot happened in the next week or so, but Coach checked in on me regularly. More importantly, he checked in on me in a way that never made me feel small or helpless. We still keep in touch today, and he was at my wedding. He was the gruff, no-nonsense coach we were all terrified of when we started playing in freshman year. But as time wore on, he became the non-family member that I knew I could go to with any problem. So that's something three different teachers did that I'll never forget. Story 24. Tenth grade English. I was in class with asterisk, extreme asterisk back pain I had been trying to withstand since the previous period. I couldn't take it anymore. I went to the teacher crying in pain and told her I needed to go to the nurse. She told me I wouldn't be able to make up the Times writing assignment. If I did so, I should think about that. It was clear she did not care about or believe me. I left for the nurse. I ran into my ninth grade English teacher on my way there. She asked me what was wrong, walked me to the nurse, told the nurse I'm not a faker, and asked me to check in with her another time. I had a 5.5 mm kidney stone moving through me. Missed the next three days of school. Tenth grade English teacher didn't even acknowledge that I'd been gone, much less ask how I was. Fudge you, Weiss. Story 25. First year college physics class. Lecture with about 70 students. There was this one kid who liked to yell out answers all the time. Prof is explaining something and hasn't asked the class anything. This kid's guesses where it's going and yells out the wrong answer. Prof says no. And continues. Minute later, kids yells out the wrong answer again. Prof says, let me finish explaining what we are doing. Another minute, and kid guesses again and again yells out the wrong answer. Prof takes a step back from the board, pulls out his wallet, flips it open like an old Star Trek communicator, and says, Beam me up, Scotty, there is no sign of intelligent life down here. He then walks out of the classroom, and you can hear him laughing in the hall for a couple minutes. Eventually, he comes back in and continues the lecture. Yelling kid stopped doing it after that. Story 26. In 10th grade, my electronics teacher, Mr. Harris gave me a bit of an intervention speech. I was flipping up pretty bad in and out of school, getting into fights, criminal activity, flunking out, etc. He is the only person to pull me aside and have a real conversation with me. It was the typical dead or in jail conversation, but it really hit. He also actually asked me what my plans were, and when I told him he recommended to just get a GED and pursue it since I had no intentions on finishing high school, I didn't immediately take his advice, and I certainly continued to fudge up for the next year or so. However, I did eventually go that route with zero regrets. Have a nice career, family, and home with a clean adult record. Shout out to Mr. Harris. He was flipping awesome. Story 27. In high school, my chemistry teacher, Mr. Vogus, was approached by a student whose grandmother had terminated herself because she was in a lot of pain. Cancer, I believe. The kid was all messed up, obviously, and he just wanted reassurance that his grandmother would go to heaven and that he'd see her again. I overheard the convo as my locker was near the chemistry classroom, and Mr. Vogus told this kid that, unfortunately, his grandmother was going to hell because it's a mortal sin. I mean, I don't even believe in God, but I would never tell a crying kid that his grandmother was going to hell. That's flipping nuts. What an unpleasant person. Story 28. Background. I'm diagnosed ADHD, but there's a high probability I'm autistic. I had meltdowns throughout elementary school. I would hide under tables to get away from everything and be physically dragged out. I would get overwhelmed and lose control, screaming and throwing things to try and keep people away. I would be terrified and teachers would grab me and lock me in closets or bathrooms. I was excluded from group activities and bullied BU students and teachers alike. I even had teachers purposefully mark papers wrong and make me redo them or take my things and throw them away. Sixth grade was different. Mrs. Staten never treated me unfairly. She listened to me and helped me feel like I wasn't just a monster on a short fuse. The first time that year that someone picked a fight with me, grabbed me from behind and bashed my head into a locker, turned into a brawl pretty quick, I didn't get in trouble for defending myself. Mrs. Staten asterisk listened to me asterisk she asterisk hugged me asterisk and I broke down crying. She never yelled or grabbed or hit or locked me anywhere and no adult had asterisk ever asterisk treated me with such complete kindness before. By the end of that year, my outbursts had become a lot more rare. All it took was one adult to care and be patient with me. Story 29. I never went to school. My parents kept me out of school and neglected me. My grandparents took me away before sixth grade and put my in public school. 
It was only my second and last experience with school. I had a teacher, Mrs. Hood, who paid extra attention to me and put me in the school newspaper. She pulled me aside one day when I was particularly covered in bruising and had a broken finger. She told me how amazing and special I am, and told me that I never, ever, ever deserved to be hit or beat or assaulted by an adult for any reason. She was the first person to ever take notice, or to my knowledge say anything about the severe physical abuse I was enduring. I knew my grandparents didn't like the abuse and did the minimal amount to help, but no one had ever talked to me the way she did and told me that it wasn't right. As far as I remember, she started the thinking that turned me away from the horrible upbringing and religious dogma. She called my parents in around Christmas to a parent-teacher meeting and confronted them with other people in the classroom. I was out in the hallway and heard yelling and name-calling by my mom and my dad. I never went back to school after that. Story 30. Mrs. G, 4th grade. I won't even give her the dignity of using her name. I could write a book about all the awful things that old hag did to me that year. I had, and still have, severe ADHD that my mother declined to acknowledge, test, or treat me for, and the shriveled old shrew made it a game to pick at and mock me in front of the whole class for my symptoms. But the thing that stuck with me the most, that still affects me even in my mid-thirties, is that she made me relearn how to write 2S, 4S, 5S, 6S, 7S, and 9S. It's not the asterisk worst asterisk thing she did to me, but it was petty, senseless, and the longest lasting. I started out by copying how they were printed in the textbooks. They looked like printed numbers. Nobody had a problem with it. Until her. Hell, her only problem with my fives was that I started from the top and drew down. They looked fine. She just didn't like my method. She made me put a loop in what should be the corner of my 2S. She made me straighten out the 6s and 9S instead of writing them with the curl they've even got in this flipping comment. It was stupid. Honestly, I'm pretty sure it was just a power trip for her. She was actually well known for picking one or two kids in her class each year to torment, and I was just one of the unlucky ones. I feel like she knew I was an easy target because with my parents in the midst of a messy divorce, they wouldn't have the bandwidth to do much anything about her bullying me. Mrs. Gee, I know you're dead by now and that the world is a asterisk, far asterisk, better place for it. But I hope it hurt. I hope it was a slow and painful, wasting death, and I hope that you were lucid enough to feel it all right to the bitter end, you sadistic old unpleasant. I hope you suffered for the way you made me and all the other kids you picked suffer. Rest in, pour out the water, you contemptible old bag. Story 31. In grade 11, I had environmental science class. My teacher noticed I wasn't doing my homework and had me stay after class to explain myself. I wasn't a confident kid, but somehow I had a ton of courage that day. I said to him, look, don't take this the wrong way, but what's your job? He was kind of shocked and replied, well, I'm your teacher. My job is to make sure you know what's in the curriculum. Right, I said. So if I know the curriculum, I shouldn't have to do the homework. Schoolwork is for school and home time is for home. He smiled and said, all right, I'll make you a deal. You don't have to do homework if you get an A on every test and project. If you get anything less than an A, you have to do your homework for the rest of the year. Deal, and we shook hands on it. I got the highest mark in the class with a 93% grade. Story 32. Back when I was in elementary school, my class teacher told my parents while I was sitting next to them I would never make it to an A level. I went dead silent. Fast forward to my high school graduation. My high school was pretty close to the elementary school. Got my A level school report left the ceremony, went to the elementary school, knocked at the now head teacher's door, entered held my report up high, flipped her the middle finger and said, F asterisk, 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 you, I made it. She went pale and asked for forgiveness. Couldn't forgive her. Fast forward to my bachelor's degree. Perfect score. Sent her, now working at the Ministry of Education, my thesis, etc. Via mail with only two words. F asterisk, 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 you. Story 33. Oh, there's so much, but there was an incident I had because of my period. It happened in eighth grade. I was in a special ed class of around ten kids. I was supposed to do a math worksheet, but was buckled over from period cramps. This was during a time I am terrified of attention, asking for help, etc., so I thought I could wait it out. Nope. Pain continued to get worse, and I thought I'd just wait until class is over to sneak over to the nurse's office. Well, the miss went up to me and asked why I hadn't done anything. I asked, can I go to the nurse? Why haven't you done math? Can I go to the nurse? If you needed help, just ask. I don't need help. I need the nurse scolding. Well, if you don't need help, why are you here? Special Ed, can I go to the nurse? 
Come outside now. I slammed the chair in my desk out of frustration because I'm in miserable amounts of pain and now irritation. Then she scolded and went on and on about my awful behavior. And of course I said one last time, can I go to the nurse? And she finally let me go. I cried into that nurse's arms and got the pain medicine I needed. Ever since then, I hated that awful teacher, to Miss Fox. No wonder you were divorced. You are a bad person. Never should you have been involved with special ed, let alone children at an awkward stage of their life. Story 34. History teacher. He always has an essay portion on tests with the header of Discuss the veracity of this statement, followed by something like The Civil War was fought over a single issue. Slavery. You would have to say if you think the statement was true or false, and then support your position in the essay using historical facts and reasoning. On one essay, I said a particular statement was false and felt good about my argument. Got out of class and talked to friends who said they all put it was true. I was panicking. A few days later, the teacher tells the class and says that someone took the position that the statement was false, which he strongly disagreed with. It felt like a punch to the gut. He went on to say that he was ready to mark it with an F until he read the full essay. He thought the person made good, well-supported arguments and came to see their point of view. He gave the student an A. Student was me. I swelled with pride. Another time in graduate school, a teacher shook my hand after seeing the results of a complicated experiment. Felt really great to have impressed him. Story 35, seventh grade. I took a consumer math course as an elective. It covered things like balancing a checkbook, as well as basic personal finance, stocks, etc. When discussing bank accounts and interest, the reach offhandedly says something to the effect of the difference between simple interest and compound interest being pennies. This didn't make sense to me, as even to 13-year-old me, the power of compounding over time seemed quite apparent. I raised my hand and asked if he could clarify as it seemed like there was actually a pretty significant difference between the two. The guy literally laughs out loud and says in a dismissive tone, no, that's not how it works. And the entire class laughed. Years later, I took accounting in high school, and one of the first topics we covered was the power of compounding. It was a sweet moment of vindication. Fudge you, Mr. Dunphy. Story 36. Of course I shouldn't have. Cheating is bad. The narc next to me dimed me out. The teacher literally had all the students form a haphazard circle with their desks and sing song, Cheaters never win, cheaters are losers, at me for a good five minutes while I sobbed in humiliation. My best friend at the time didn't want to sing it. The teacher singled her out and made her sing it. She couldn't even give me that. Cheaters never win, cheaters are losers. There were so many better ways that could have been handled, but she chose the nasty way. Story 37. Miss Cheney, ninth grade English, this woman was a witch. She openly favored white boys in her classes. I am a female of color. I did not have a good time in her class. She told me that my writing was abysmal. Refused to correct the second halves of my essays multiple times. Requested that I be demoted from honors English, which did happen. I thought I was a terrible writer for years. If I had a chance to speak to her today, I would tell her that all of my success has been in spite of her. I earned graduate degrees and have been commended for my writing by multiple peers and mentors since leaving her class. Story 38. Got in trouble in 12th grade for exposing a database of every student's social security number, phone number, address, full name, and date of birth going back nearly 10 or so years. This was my first experience as a gray hat. Tried reporting the vulnerabilities, but was told verbatim that I was being made into a scapegoat so noon would ever try it again. My technology engineering teacher told me I would be lucky to ever touch a computer again, and no job would ever hire me if it involved computers. Boy, was he wrong. Just because I want to provide an explanation, I demonstrated that if you could authenticate to either their private or public Wi-Fi network, a relatively primitive computer user could access a plaintext database that was utilized by the cafeteria workers to prescribe employees and students their lunch codes that they would type into a keypad to charge their daily meals to an account. Not only was the database unsecured, but there were copies going back nearly a decade stored in plaintext alongside the database and there was no additional authentication required to access nor change the contents. I also demonstrated that any user with a trial copy of a common Reboot Restore software package could access any computer connected to the network and not only watch any user on their computer, but could access any inputs as well as control the computer. They had purchased the enterprise license of this software, but had not properly secured the access control policy for it. Story 39. 
We had two computer teachers in HS who couldn't have been more different. The easier teacher was inept. I opted to take the harder-ass teacher's classes and quite rapidly formed a great bond with her. I taught her beginner's classes, and she got me onto our computer sciences team. But what she said that always stuck around wasn't about school, computers, or anything else. She asked about a necklace I wore. I was the goth teen subgroup type. So this was an inverted pentagram with a goat's head, and then showed me her own much cheerier nature-based one. She said she understood putting hard edges around our beliefs so people don't get close enough to tear them down, but that it was still okay to be soft close to your heart. Then she tucked her necklace back into her sweater, and we never talked about it again. It stuck out because it never occurred to me that adults, especially authority figures in our tiny Extian town, might be pagan too. That I wasn't endeavoring out alone. She was amazing. And I wouldn't have ended up doing what I do without that little nudge, hiding my heart in thorns because people suck so much there. Story 40. I got bullied a lot, then a little less, and then I bad to change my class, and it all started again even though almost no one knew me there. There was this dude, and he hated me, and no one knew why. Even the girls in my class noticed and asked me about it, and Jay didn't know. So long story short. A lot of the boys bullied me, but this one dude was so aggressive. He always made fun of me threw my table against the wall because he didn't want me to sit next to him. I had to be in the front row BC, I can't concentrate otherwise. He had to be there too because he can't behave. And there were only two seats. So yeah, he screamed at me. I screamed back and he threw the table. And later when the teacher came and everything kind of calmed down, she asked what's wrong because I was still so shaken up and almost crying. And then when I told her, she said that I don't have to be so hard on him. You know how X is. She told me not to be so dramatic. Story 41. I was a spelling prodigy. In third grade, I was the best speller in the school, but I was naive. On the stage at the spelling bee for school-wide competition, I was joined by all fifth graders. One by one, they all fell until it was me and a girl from the proctor's homeroom. We went back and forth for a while, and then the proctor said, spell symbol. I was tired and didn't ask for it in a sentence. S-W-M-B-O-L. Wrong, sit down. There was actually an audible gasp from the audience. Bad person teacher got her student through to the regional spelling bee. The next year in fourth grade, the spelling bee came around and the class got real quiet and were glancing at me. Everyone in class took turns spelling until it was my turn. Spell watermelon. I stood up and said some approximation of ZZXVQRRZWWWW and then sat down looking pissed. The teacher who knew what happened last year and had been encouraging everyone to participate just said fair enough and kept going. Spelling bees are rigged. Fudge you, Mrs. Baxter. If I ever met you as an adult, I'd cuss you out.